Hello, my beautiful Leo friends, and welcome to your horoscope for June of 2020, where Leo, this month is a busy month. It is a busy month. We have got 60% of the planets. Now, instead of last month, we had 40%. Now we will have 60% of the planets coming into retrograde activity, plus we've got eclipses. This is a busy month, but it is also a month where it is in a slowdown. We are busy. We are shifting our energies. Our attentions are shifting, but we're doing it in a slowdown. So while it is busy, it is at a slower pace, which is actually beautiful because it gives us time to go back over these areas of life and see where we'd like to make some adjustments or where we would even like to just explore and have some depth and have some more joy in these areas. And you are our joy sign. So I look forward to seeing what kind of joy you're going to produce over this next five months in your life and the lives of others. So let's jump in here and talk about what's happening this month. Right at the beginning of the month, we're going to see Mercury on the 2nd moving into its shadow time, getting ready for its retrograde this month. So as of the second of the month, if you start to feel like there is a slowdown, like genuinely you're starting to get a little bit more tired because this will be happening in your 12th house. This is such a 12th house month for you. So much work on spiritual things is going to be happening. Your attention will be put there very much so finishing up projects, getting ready to renew yourself and come out at birthday season with a redesigned kind of image. So you're going back over that stuff and you'll start to feel the slowdown in the thinking and in the decision making, I think, in this particular area. And where you'll get ready to speed up during the Mercury retrograde is cleaning those things up in the past. But as of the second, the energy starts to slow down mentally and they move out of a highly mental energy and move into a more emotional energy as well. So if you find yourself kind of feeling like you're tapped a little bit more into your intuition or your emotions feel a little bit closer to the surface as of the second, this is definitely what's going on, okay? On the fifth, we are going to jump into this full moon happening in the energy of Sagittarius. And this is a full moon lunar eclipse. So we're eclipsing. Now, every time there is an eclipse, you are heavily involved in that, no matter where it is at, because you're ruled by the sun. So the sun and the moon, as they dance and move together, you've got investment. You've got some skin in the game here, Leo, okay? So this is going to be happening for you in your fifth house. Now, the lunar eclipse is a, an eclipsing out, right? Like we reset here. So you're having a resetting in this particular area. And a lot of this has to do with perception, your perception. Sagittarius is a very big picture kind of energy. So this is a big picture perception in the fifth house area of your life. So for some of you, this is going to be about your expression, how you're expressing yourself, how you're showing up and you're, you're letting us see your creative talents or your voice or who and what you're about. And maybe even I would think since January, some of you have been kind of refining how you express yourself or what that brand, even if you don't have a company, what your Leo brand kind of is out there. And this is a wonderful time to be able to see that you're going to have an adjustment here and it'll play out over the next six months, right? The other thing that is very, very much so coming up is children. And I don't always just put children or babies with children. This could be your pet project, your hobby, something that you have been nurturing and caring for, but it's experiencing a little bit of a shift or a redesign of their identities as well. So this could definitely be a place in the fifth house where it's like there are changes to these young energies in your life. This could even be a young romance in your life that's getting a little bit of a shift. It's getting a reset because it's ready to go to the next level, okay? On the 18th, we're going to see Mercury take its retrograde in the energy of Cancer, and it will be there all the way until July 12th. Now, doing this full retrograde in your 12th house, like I said, your mind, your focus, your emotions, the depth of support, right? Where you want to have support, Cancer, where you make a home. This is all going to be happening in the 12th house. So reinvesting in your spiritual life, reinvesting in your research projects, finishing some things up, doing a meditation doing a retreat, doing anything creative. Oh, I'm getting a vision here. Okay, some of you will be your your parent or a significant parent figure in your life is having to make an adjustment or they have circumstances that make them have an adjustment and you are able to just kind of quietly be there to help. But this may be even... Um, a family adjustment that comes up for you at this particular retrograde time as well. Um, so just keep me posted in the comment section down below if that's you, okay? 
On the 20th, we see the sun entering into the energy of Cancer. So again, lighting up this 12th house space. So I th think this is where your help comes in because it's light, heat, life, and vitality. There's a full motivation, full movement happening here with the sun in this energy of Cancer. So you would be motivated to create home, help at home, even if it's a 12th house home, make peace of your home, right? Then we go just a day later and we have a new moon in the energy of Cancer. So the new moon is a new moon solar eclipse. So at the new moon, we plant these seeds of intention, right? Of where we're going next, what we would like to have in this area. This is the time right before birthday time. So truly you're cleaning out the annual closet and getting ready for a reset here. And I really feel like too, because this is in the energy of Cancer and it is at a critical zero degree of cancer, it tells us it is time for an emotionally intelligent reset for you in this particular 12th house area. So what does that look like for you, Leo? Are you cleaning out um, are you transitioning some relationships out that just don't work for you anymore? Are you trusting your intuition on projects that are maybe you're going to want to bring out over the rest of the year? For some of you too, because this is such a home energy with cancer being involved or a women's energy being in involved here, I think you are, you're ready to have um, a more solidly rooted female relationship in your life, or it's like there's a feminine component that is trying to help you do something move forward. Like maybe it's trying to help you make a home, but still this energy of family is very, very high at this one. The other thing I'll tell you about this particular solar eclipse, Leo, is that if you can reduce your schedule, if you can give yourself some downtime, you know, a day or two before this, if you can just lighten your schedule that week, I feel like you are all the better for it because you're ruling planet is involved here and this is a high impact energy that will carry out for the next six months so on these couple days if you can give yourself a break you're going to be grateful for it i think on the other side now as we get to the 23rd neptune is going to take a retrograde in the energy of pisces this will light up your eighth house now pisces or neptune in pisces has been in your eighth house and will continue to be for some time but it's going to do this retrograde dance until november now neptune retrograde when Neptune's direct, we have creativity, we have fantasy. It's kind of like, I'm not sure exactly what I'm looking at, but this is okay. We have some daydream, right? But as Neptune goes retrograde, what typically happens for us is it's like, boom, this is concrete reality. It feels hard. It feels concrete. It feels very solid. So in your eighth house, which is a joint house, joint resources, joint finances, intimacy, vulnerability, sex, um, astrology, occult things, healings, any of those places where you are jointly connected to an energy source that you provide, but also another energy taps into, you're going to get some concrete reality where it's like, whoa, this is what's going on in my life. I do need to pay those taxes. I do need to be more vulnerable. I do need to handle this past sexual trauma. I do need to address the issues that I'm having or not even issues, but the um, awakenings that I'm having, having around loss and death and change and transformation, but they get very solid and very heavy. And instead, as Neptune is traveling the retrograde, where the path that is the strongest is backwards, Neptune's going to ask you to create the next ideal in this area, right? And I love this because Neptune's like, well, what do you want in your eighth house? What kind of collaborations? What kind of money? What kind of intimacy? What kind of sex would you like? What kind of freedom from, with healing would you like, right? Where is your next joint connection coming in? Where is your independence? Because it needs to be an interdependence instead of a codependence. Neptune asks you to create it in a very... Um, vision kind of way so that as she comes out of retrograde in November, you can make it a concrete reality. This is a wonderful place to create um, any kind of content or any kind of fun ideas or any kind of um, teachings on healing or death or transformation. It's absolutely beautiful for that as well. Some of you will be getting care for your reproductive organs as well or um, you know, maybe you're entering IVF or something like that. This is a beautiful connection to that family energy as well that I feel at the beginning of the month. So whatever that looks like for you, that's what's happening. Now, the example I always use with Neptune, just to make it clear, is that before a chair was a chair, it was just a creation. It was just an idea. It had to be an idea. And then it got brought into conscious material reality. So that's what you'll be doing with your Neptune retrograde. On the 25th, Venus is coming out of retrograde in the energy of Gemini at five degrees. So this is going to be in your 11th house, just two houses up from where you're at. Now in the 11th house, you have spent time re-looking at your relationships, re-looking at social structures, re-looking at social connections, your long range dreams and ambitions and goals and what you want 
for yourself, right? You have spent time re-looking at those things. Are these the right relationships for you? Are you making money? Do these things, do these sources, do these connections have value? Do you have some friends in your life, right? Like, or did you need to shave down the friend zone? Did people start to kind of fall off a little bit, right? Any of those things would have been what you have re-evaluated because you want the highest quality value here. You want harmony, you want diplomacy, but you want it ringing and pulsing with value. Now, as Venus is out of retrograde, any adjustments you saw that maybe you needed to make, you can step forward and make them. Venus will support you. She's going to still be in the energy of Gemini all month long. So you can continue to make those changes and those adjustments here. And I also feel like because it is in the energy of Gemini, at a social level, one of the questions you were asking is, are these groups, is this social connection, is this friend bringing me good information, good content? Do we have good conversation? Is there an intellectual investment for us here? And if the answer has been no or the, okay, there could be, you'll go investigate that now moving forward. Now, of course, Venus is in Gemini. It could have brought you a romance. And I'll just tell you, wait until just a couple days after June 25th to make sure it's going to stick around and it has the depth and the weight and the value that Leo deserves to stick around for the long haul, okay? On the 28th, Mars is going to come home and enter into the energy of Aries, lighting up your ninth house space. So super comfortable. Mars is ready to work here. He's ready to do things in the energy of Aries. So you're ready to publish, market, broadcast, study, do higher learning, do some training, maybe even. I do think that even though we've still got some quarantine stuff going on, some of you may be traveling and maybe what your travel is about is maybe you're traveling home or maybe you're traveling back to something that feels like home, even if that's a course of study or um, I keep seeing this space where you're going back to a specific teacher or a specific, you were learning with somebody maybe before and maybe you drifted away and it was like, yeah, I belong a little bit more over here and you're maybe coming back to that. But Mars is ready to take action here. So if you did want to publish that book, if you need to do the marketing for that book, if you want to take that Spanish class or that sign language class, do it. Mars is set and ready to go here. But the other thing I will tell you about Mars and Aries, especially in this particular area of your chart, trust your instincts. Aries trusts their instincts, and I think that yours are sharp at this particular time in this area of your life, so trust your instincts, okay? As we close out the month on the 30th, we're going to see Jupiter and Pluto come together for another conjunction. Now, we saw it first happen in April, and now it's happening again, and we'll see it again in November. Now, before, when Jupiter and Pluto came together, they were both direct. So what happened is in this sixth house area of your life, your health your wellness, including mental health and wellness, your work, your co-workers, if you do any kind of freelance work, right? What happened is Jupiter and Pluto came together and it is like, boom, it is like focus meets desire meets expansion meets wisdom. And you're able to really take off in that kind of area, right? And it shows you the value of transformation, the value of why you would change in order to have something else. So you started something at that time. Now though, as they meet again and they can join in this exact same energy, they're both retrograde. So what you're going to do is go back over, reevaluate, re-edit, recreate, rethink this particular area of your life. This may even include your health routines or your health practitioners could be here as well. But the ultimate energy that they're bringing you conjoined in a retrograde is the understanding that you have an immense capacity and ability to effectively and successfully surmount your challenges. They're going to help show you the way through by going back over it, right? It's like building a house. You can't just throw down some foundation and it's fine. You got to smooth that stuff out a little bit, right? Make sure that thing is level. Level equals success here, right? So this is a beautiful energy to end the month on where you are being shown with some astrological cosmic help that you can make the changes that you would like to. It is in a daily routine kind of space. So if mundane things haven't been getting done or you've been a little bit away from your organization, Capricorn, this will also help either bring um, organizational tools or organizational products or people that can help you be successful as well. So it is getting on track, it's getting in an alignment, but it is about creating an area of your life that is so crystallized, refined, and able to be successful here that as you draw these new projects into your life or you draw a healthy daily routine into your life, you know it is solid, it is steady, it is brimming with joy, with enthusiasm and effectiveness 
for your world. All right, Leos, I think it's going to be a busy month. I think it's going to be a beautiful month. There's a lot of shifts. There's a lot of changes. There are a lot of things that are going to be coming up globally. So just keep your eye on the prize this month. You can only do you and then add where you can, right? We've got plenty of eat and greets coming up around the corner. Rick Levine is coming. Gemini Brett will be here to talk about the lunar eclipses as well. So we've got friends coming over to visit and I am looking forward to bringing people to you and bringing content to you. So if you also have an astrologer specifically that you follow that you would love to see doing content over here please put it in the comment section down below I would love to know who they are I would love to go meet them I would love to eat and greet with them all right you guys like this video comment share subscribe it's almost birthday time and I look forward to walking you through that season as well I love you guys bye